And the team said, that's important. Mm -hmm. So Rob's heard all this before. So he can give the speech. <laughs> Um, I was actually waiting for Francois from uh, Gigabyte, but uh, I'll begin by saying uh, well, thank you very much for everybody to attend, and uh, it's been a busy day so far. Made a little detour via Saheti School, where we go, where we uh, managed to congratulate Gabrielle in front of her school. Um, well, I'd also like to begin by thanking uh, Gigabyte, uh, who came through at the last moment. Um, we had a few problems, uh, still waiting for money from other sources. And uh, if it wasn't for Gigabyte, uh, we would have had to uh, slash the team a little. So, yeah, keep it Generally speaking, there should be a SASCOP official here who's not here. But I suppose they're still, you know, recuperating after the Olympics and Paralympics. Um, <clears throat> the, the whole reason we have to do a formal handover of colours is. Uh, sorry, is that um, we have to actually get the team together? That we have to. It has to be a public issuing of colours because project colours themselves are in fact a um, state award. Uh, not many players know the um, issues that federations go through in order to give the colours. We have to have, obviously, development projects. We have to have our books properly audited and submitted to SASCOC and the department. From time to time, the presidents of federations are hauled up in front of the parliamentary monitoring group and uh, quizzed over what we have done and what we haven't done. And, of course, we have to meet national priorities. Um, in awarding the colours, we have to have obviously, um, as well, um, championships which people through which people qualify, and we've got to have trials. And the way in which we select the teams are open to scrutiny by the, by SASCOC and the Project Colours Board. Uh, the Project Colours Board itself is made up half of SASCOC, which is the Olympic Committee, and Department of Sport and Recreation. So by the time you get your project colours, those are all the hoops we've jumped through. No wonder we look a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the project colours that you get are the same colours that everybody else gets for their sports, whether it's uh, pigeon shooting, I think play pigeon shooting, I don't do it. Yes. <laughs> Cricket, hockey, swimming, whatever. Um, and uh, one of the reasons we use this as a venue, um, because we like old Eds, but also old Eds has a number of uh, members in the past who have earned project colours for war games. And if you go downstairs on the Project Colours boards, you'll actually see those people's names alongside those of Graham Smith, Neil McKenzie, Graham Pollock, etc. And uh, people like Neil McKenzie, Graham Smith, Brian Habana, all recognise these colours as having the same value as the colours that they have learned. So it's something of which all the gamers can be proud and know that it has real value. It has real value also when you start looking at universities. And the universities, um, if they have a club on their campus, do offer bursaries. 
um, not only that, but should you perform well overseas, we can actually nominate you for the South African Sports Awards. This year we nominated seven people for the South African Sports Awards. It's a tough year, but what with the Olympics and the Paralympics. Um, <clears throat> but first prize there is 130,000 Rand, second prize is 50,000, and if you're just accepted as a nominee, you get 10,000 Rand. So, the Prato colours that you have have real value. And along with that, obviously, there's a code of conduct. Uh, when you wear your project colours, we expect, and the Olympic Committee expects, the gamers to be exemplary South Africans. Uh, in every single way. Not only in gaming, but in the way that they behave and they treat the other gamers. Um, we're very proud of our record. I don't think we've taken a crosser rotten apple yet um, and everybody actually enjoys meeting the South Africans um, and we get on very well with all the other countries so if we can keep that up but of course also win our games especially you Bob <laughs> it's just <not> <laughs> Gideon Sam always says, if you don't get a medal, we're not bringing you back. Oh. Well, you've seen the flight tickets, so <laughs> <laughs> you know we are. <laughs> um, anyway, I couldn't leave anybody in the country that would stop. Right. <laughs> uh, my my basso would not be very impressed with that. It's actually quite funny because whenever the organisers from Korea phone me, my basso actually goes absolutely ballistic. <laughs> Maybe it's something in the tone of their voice. Yeah, the dog so, yeah dogs know best. <laughs> so, um, without much further ado, so we can get on, because it's a busy day, because we need to be at the airport at 12. And I'm sure some people have got some last minute things that they want to do. Um, I'd like to get some photographs taken of the team, obviously, so we can just send them out to the journalists who said they were coming and haven't arrived. Uh, sorry, story of my life. Um, I would actually like to begin by giving everybody their colours. Let me move this to the side. First, we have Robert Louis Boiter. Do look slightly different. Okay. Lareen Kun. And last but not least, uh, all the way from Cape Town. Vittorio. <laughs> <laughs> 